Hello and welcome back to CodeBlaze. In the last episode of creating voxel chunks in Unity using Job System and Burst Compiler, we added the basic block data that would be required for creating cubes. And in today's episode, we'll actually start creating cubes. So we'll just be creating a single cube programmatically and nothing much more than that. And let's see how much time this episode take if it's less i'll be add the job uh, the job system introduction also in this episode otherwise i guess it would be better to have the job system introduction as a separate episode so let's see so for now uh, we'll create a new mono behavior so for that i'll create a new directory called cube and inside this we'll create a new mono behavior called cube and we will require the mesh filter for the rendering part so we'll create a private mesh filter mesh filter and we'll create an awake method and in the awake we'll retrieve the mesh filter get component of type mesh filter and then we'll create the start method and here we'll actually do the cube creation logic so for creating cube we must have code to create faces that will be the all six faces of the cube and to do that we need to get the face vertices so in the blocks extension uh, in the blocks class i'll create a static class called block extensions public static class block extensions now this extension class doesn't strictly follow the c sharp extension class definition it just has some utility code related to blocks it doesn't need to be directly called on blocks since this get face vertices won't be called on on blocks it would be a static method and later we will move this method to some other class when we get into proper creating chunks using job system but for now we'll have it here so we'll create a new method here public static uh, and this will return a vector 3 array so that would be the uh, vertices vector 3 array called get face vertices and this will take in a direction corresponding to which face to create an integer called scale which would be the scale of the face and a vector 3 uh, would be the world position of the face so we'll just call this position okay and the next thing that we'll be implementing would be yeah so we'll implement this method so for that we'll create a face vertices array new vector 3 array of length 4 since each face will have only 4 elements uh, 4 positions then we'll have a for loop which will run from 0 to 4 so that would correspond to the four vertex positions of the face and in the end we'll be returning this face vertices array so in this for loop uh, we'll be populating this face vertices arrays with the correct vertex position now to get the correct vertex position we need to know which of the face we are creating so with the direction enum we'll get uh, one of these six face index arrays and then depending upon the iteration of the for loop we'll get one of these numbers and then we'll use that number to query the vertex array and that way we'll get our vertices so to implement this we'll say face vertices dot i uh, is equal to block data dot vertices okay now to what we need to query this would be an index so we'll just create an index here and we'll pass this here so this index will actually be an integer value once we populate it so this index is something that we'll get from the triangles array so we'll do block data dot triangles and here since the block data dot triangles is a two-dimensional array we'll need to input two values here the first would be the integral value of our direction enum so we'll basically cast it to an int and the second would be the iteration index of the loop 
with this we'll get the index that we need to query the vertex array with and here we have the uh, vertex position so we'll take the vertex position and multiply that by our scale and add the world position to it so this way we'll be able to create faces of any scale anywhere in the world um, but this will just return the vertexes vertex positions only uh, the next thing we'll need are the triangles and the way i'm going to do triangles is kind of temporary for the cube only because later we'll be implementing it differently for the chunks so for now uh, we'll have two lists here of vector 3 so one list is of vector 3 called vertices and another list we'll have as list of integers and this will be called try angles and i don't know the spelling of triangles is that's embarrassing so yeah and in the start the first thing we'll do is initialize these so vertices is equal to new vector 3 list and we know for the cube we'll only have eight vertices here but yeah for now let it be like this and then we'll have the triangles and this would be also be a new lint okay now the way we are creating uh, the cubes we won't be reusing uh, the vertex positions since each face will have four vertex positions technically we would have 24 vertex positions in our vertices arrays though there may be repetitions there are some algorithms out there to reduce this number but it won't matter for a case of cube here so let's get with it so we'll create a new private method here private void create face this will take in a direction and an in and a vector 3 position okay so this create face function will actually populate our vertices array and the triangles array with the correct data so what we need to do is to our vertices array vertices array dot add we'll do add range and here we'll call block extensions dot get face vertices we'll pass in the direction for now we'll have scale as one and the position will be pause so this way our vertices array is populated okay next uh, we need the current count of a vertices array so we'll store that as a variable here so we'll call that v count and this would be equal to vertices dot length oh count so I always confuse with length and count for some places it's length some is count some it's size but yeah rider takes care of it and next we'll populate the triangles now there are two ways to populate the triangles we could actually use the uh, triangles data again but there is a smart way to do it since we know the vertex count we can actually compute the triangles uh, triangle indexes required using the vertex count and if you need more explanation on it again i'll suggest you watch the series on anatomy of a cube that i had linked down in the previous video so to do that we'll first thing we'll do is call the triangles array and call add okay and the first integer we'll add is v count minus four okay next we'll add triangles dot add we'll add v count minus four plus one so this minus four will be common for like we'll be adding six numbers here corresponding to two triangles and this minus four will be common so where this minus four comes from because each face adds four vertices to the vertex array that's why we minus four every time and you can actually save this as minus four here only so you don't need to do this again yeah i'll just do that so we can reduce this code here so this will be v count plus one next we'll add one more triangle one more index of the triangle that would be v count 
plus 2 so these three indexes will create one triangle and next we need to create the second triangle of the face so again we'll take triangles dot add v count and triangles dot add v count plus 2 and triangles dot add v count plus 3 so with this all our uh, vertex and triangles array have been populated and so what we can do here in start is create a for loop and the upper limit would be 6 and we'll call create face with uh, we'll cast this to direction actually we'll cast i to one direction and the position would be vector 3.0 dot zero for now so we'll create a cube at zeroth position so this will be called six times and our vertices and the triangles array would be populated so we'll take a mesh filter and call mesh is equal to new mesh and we'll use the initialization syntax and we don't need to call everything actually we'll store this mesh as a variable here and i'll pass the mesh here since we need to call few functions on the mesh also and in the initialization we'll say the vertices is equal to underscore vertices and the triangles hey, what's happening triangles is equal to underscore triangles well, it's complaining oh it needs to be an array so we'll convert this to array yeah that's not a big problem instead of list it takes an array so with this we have a mesh created now there's a few things we need to do so in the mesh we'll calculate the normals okay we'll mesh dot recalculate bounds the recalculating bounds is something you can get away with i don't know whether it's properly required or not and mesh dot recalculate tangents so these two things uh bounds and tangents something you could get away with and i'm mostly sure the triangles order is correct here so you won't actually need to recalculate normals also but just to for security purposes i've just added here you can try by commenting these three lines and with this we have a cube component done so if we go back to unity and let it import the changes So we'll create a new game, empty game object and we'll call it cube. We'll position it at 0, 0, 0. We'll add the component cube to it. Also, we require the mesh filter. And the mesh filter itself requires the mesh renderer. Okay, so without these two components, it won't work and why it's using yeah we don't want any probes <laughs> so if i just play there could be errors there could not be errors we never know okay so we can't see our cube actually if i go into the scene actually the cube is there there is no material applied to it so that's why it's not visible so we'll take the mesh renderer and apply the default diffuse material now it's the hdrp default material yeah default hd material and if i save it and play it again we should be able to see the cube so as you can see we have the cube created and if i go into the scene view you would see we have the bounds also properly uh, represented by this orange outline and with that we have our cube creation done so how much time did this take it's already 15 minutes so yeah uh,
the job system and the basics of the job system will be covering in the next episode since uh, we'll be changing a lot of we'll need to work with the native data containers also so it's better to have that as a separate episode so i'll be able to explain you properly what the native data containers are and how to use them and all so i'm looking forward like it may take two two to three episodes to explain how i am going to use the job system it won't be a proper in-depth explanation since even i don't know fully <laughs> the things but yeah it would be enough so that you could actually start using job systems in your own projects and you can see its benefits and how to properly implement it so thanks for watching if you have any suggestions please leave them down below in the comment section do share these videos it really helps me when the channel grows so i'll be able to provide you with more content and subscribe for the upcoming videos thanks bye